Private William Hudson, the smart-talking, bypassing, self-proclaimed ultimate badass, may not always have kept his cool under pressure, but when it counted most, he was ready to step up and fight the good fight. His last stand against the aliens in the operations center was a pure blaze of glory. He blasted bugs left and right, taunting them, and leaving his fears far behind. Sadly for this fan-favorite character, one of the creatures appeared from beneath the flooring and pulled him down to his death. It's a heroic moment, and certainly an appropriate final moment dramatically, but it is hard to say goodbye to such a great character. But what if the alien from the floor didn't catch him off guard and bring him to his demise? What if he was able to get out of the way before it emerged? What if Hicks was able to help him before it was too late? Essentially, the pressing question is, what if Hudson survived the attack in operations? With such a large threat looming over the surviving characters, every single person counts, and the events that follow would surely be altered significantly. So let's take a look at some of the possibilities that would have come from Hudson surviving, Hudson specifically, and what this could mean for him and the other characters from the finale of Aliens. The first and best possible outcome of Hudson surviving is that it creates a ripple effect where everyone else who met terrible fates afterwards would also survive. Vasquez has plenty of backup and never falls behind, never having Gorman to go back for her and never needing to set off the grenade that causes Newt to fall down the shaft. Ripley, Hicks, Newt, Hudson, Vasquez, and Gorman all make it to meet Bishop and take off in the dropship. They make it out with plenty of time before the psycho's nuclear, never even see the terrifying queen alien, and all live to fight another day. Now, Hudson specifically is within a unique set of circumstances than the other Marines, being a short-timer. There are a few references to this throughout the film. Hudson laments that he only had four weeks left to go before discharge, but instead was going to buy it on this rock. A pwn grills Hudson to get his prep done, saying he doesn't care whether or not he's short, and just to get it done. And after Bishop's knife trick, he also calls Hudson short shit, referring to his status. The novelization of Aliens by Alan Dean Foster goes into further details on this matter and makes it clear exactly what Hudson's intentions are after his time is done. From the novel. Hudson was pacing the floor like a caged cat. Oh man, and I was getting short too. Four more weeks and out. Three of that in hypersleep. Early retirement. Ten years in the Marines and you're out and sitting pretty, they said. Recruiters. Now I'm gonna buy it on this rock. It ain't fair, man. Vasquez looked bored. Give us a break, Hudson. He spun on her. That's easy for you to say, Vasquez. You're a lifer. You love mucking around on these alien dirt balls so you can blow away anything that sticks up bug eyes. Me? I joined for the pension. Ten years and out, take the credit and buy into a little bar somewhere. Hire somebody else to run the joint so I can kick back and jab chat with the customers while the money rolls in. Ah, Hudson's Bar. Sounds like a dream. A place where everybody knows your name. Where Hudson engages in chats, makes some drinks, and regales the patrons with what they would probably perceive to be tall tales of dangerous alien encounters. Sadly, this was not meant to be. But it was something on Hudson's horizon. Probably the dream that kept him fighting. Another possibility, even with Hudson surviving, is that Vasquez and Gorman still fall behind and meet their fates. Hudson may have been positioned in the air ducts closer to Hicks and emerged from the exit at the same time while the grenade goes off. The blast still could go off and knock Newt down with neither Marine and Ripley's company able to help. After all, as it was originally scripted, the explosion actually had nothing to do with Newt's fall. As it was originally written in Cameron's screenplay, and in fact still remains, the panel Newt steps on is simply rusted and she breaks through falling into the depths below. The real question is, would Hudson put up a fight about whether or not to go save Newt? I'm sure he would initially, but I don't think he'd go so far as to cowardly run off on his own to meet the dropship. He'd probably be hesitant to go alone anyway, and in this case he was outvoted. And surely he had his own rapport with Newt, especially after saving her from the facehugger in Medlab, and would have come along. With only one welder and little time, the result would have been the same. Newt still would have been captured. Let's assume, though, that they still catch an alien at the elevator, and Hicks is still the only one to get injured with acid blood. This would be where Hudson reaches his breaking point. He would very much object to going back to the atmosphere processor in the attempt to rescue Newt from the Hive. He would surely be bitching and moaning about it, maybe not necessarily unreasonably, 
but he'd be pleading for them all to just get the fuck out of there or else they're all gonna die. With Hicks in a weakened state, this would be a pretty intense direct confrontation with Ripley. But I just don't see any possible scenario whatsoever where Ripley would be convinced to leave without going back for Newt. There's just no way. So we'd still see that scenario. And there wouldn't be much the private could do about it, like it or not. Hudson is outranked by Hicks, who ultimately has the final say in the mission, and ultimately things would play out the same. The only difference, I guess, with Hudson being tensely waiting off-screen for Ripley's return. Where things would really make a big difference for Hudson is when the Queen makes her appearance back on the Sulaco after stowing away on the dropship. Hudson would likely be there along with Ripley and Newt in the cargo bay once Bishop is attacked and ripped in half. At this point, Hicks would still be in the dropship, unconscious, and the Queen may not have even been aware of his presence. Hudson, however, would be another target for the Queen's rage. Whether or not Hudson would have still been armed at this point may be a detail worth considering. Maybe he left his pulse rifle on the dropship after a brief and false feeling of safety once back on the mothership, or maybe he would have been paranoid enough to remain armed until every inch of the ship was checked. Either way, it probably would be this moment in the story where Hudson steps up to make a last stand, replacing his blaze of glory in operations, but this time going head-to-head -head with the big bad bitch herself. How long would this face-off last? Probably not too long, judging by what the Queen did to Bishop. Hudson would be torn apart, and pretty quickly at that. But he at least, maybe, would have been able to get a few shots in and injure the Queen in some way before being killed and, in his mind at least, would be able to buy Ripley and Newt a little bit of time to run for cover. I'd say this would be the likeliest scenario for the character if he made it this far, based on what we know of him and his personality and his willingness to fight when things look grim, despite all his griping along the way. And maybe no matter what, no matter how far he can go, a character like Hudson is just unfortunately destined to meet a fate like this and not make it to the very end. But you never really know for sure. Maybe all the business with Ripley delaying the escape from LV-426 and going back for Newt just pushed Hudson past all reason, finally breaking him into pure cowardice. There's always another possible scenario of when the Queen attacks, Hudson completely loses it, runs and hides, and only peeks his head out once the fight is over. Cowardly? Sure. Pathetic? Maybe. But at that point, could you really blame him? Call him a chicken if you want, but he'd still be able to live on and, down the road, finally open his bar. Personally though, I still think he'd put up a fight in this scenario. A character like Hudson is so human and so ultimately likable that, of course, deep down we want him to have a happy ending, though a happy ending in the world of Alien is certainly a rarity. As much as we do like the character, it's that final stand that he makes that really drives his arc home and becomes the perfect punctuation to the character. Hudson remains one of the most beloved characters in the entire series. A large part of that is thanks to how James Cameron wrote him, but undoubtedly what brings him all the way home is the incredible performance by Bill Paxton. Bill, we love you. We miss you. There's not a day that goes by that your fans don't miss you dearly. Hudson is one of the crown jewels in your body of work and keeps us coming back to a movie like Aliens. Gone far too soon but alive forever in our hearts when we watch our favorite films and spend time with our favorite characters. Long live Private Hudson. Do you think any of the scenarios presented here are plausible, or do you prefer them to what ended up in the movie? In particular, would a face-off against the Queen be a grander last stand than the one we got, or do you think it's perfect the way it is? And are there any other scenarios that would have gone down following a survival in operations? Comment below and let me know what you think. And as always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave it a like, and be sure to subscribe to keep up with the latest Alien Theory videos. My very special thanks goes out to Brandon James, Xeno Shadowmorph, and Xenozip, Queen Tears of the Patreon Hive. Thank you to Gregory Ford and John Griggs, the Hive's Praetorians. A very special thanks to the wonderful Lady Anne and the Ellen Ripley Tier of Excellence. And thank you so much to Nicholas Butta, and Frank, the Alien Theory Whalen Jutani Executives. I'll be back soon with more videos. In the meantime, you can follow me on social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on TikTok for some fun video extras, and follow at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.